Because it's the only the third time we've ever seen an interstellar object. And interstellar doesn't just mean Matthew McConaughey. It means something not from our solar system. It's interstellar. It's between suns. And so this thing came from like beyond our solar system and it's just ah, passing through. It's only the third time we've ever seen something like that. Is that so, why it's called three eye? Yeah, because Look it's three eye, not one eye or two eye. It's three <laughs> eye. That's exactly right. So right now, this very moment, an object from deep interstellar space, three eye Atlas, is racing toward the sun at well over 200,000 kilometers per hour. In 12 days, it reaches perihelion, its closest approach to the sun, where its speed and the sun's gravity peak. Here, what has scientists on edge? Based on orbital modeling, it might not leave. Under specific conditions, 3i Atlas could use solar gravity to shed energy and end up gravitationally bound, not a visitor, but a resident. If that happened, it would be a first in recorded history for an interstellar object. A few high-profile voices, most notably Harvard astrophysicist Avi Loeb, have floated bold hypotheses about what 3i Atlas could be and what might happen at perihelion. Some of those ideas are provocative and unproven, but they're testable, and the next few weeks will matter. Before we dive in, Subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss the post-perihelion updates. The next time we see 3i Atlas, the story could change. When astronomers first tracked 3i Atlas, something stood out immediately. Unlike most interstellar visitors, which approach from random angles, this object was almost perfectly aligned with the ecliptic plane, the same flat disk where all our planets orbit. The odds of that happening by chance are less than 2 in 100. It's like throwing a dart blindfolded from another continent and hitting the bullseye. To make things even stranger, 3i Atlas is on a trajectory that allows for something once thought impossible, an Oberth maneuver. This is a physics principle where an object gains, or in rare cases, loses enormous energy by firing its engines at the lowest point of its orbit, deep inside a gravitational well. If 3i Atlas were to apply even a small amount of thrust at perihelion, that closest point to the sun, it could use the sun's gravity not to escape, but to slow down just enough to be captured. That would transform it from a fleeting interstellar visitor into a permanent resident of our solar system. Here, where things take a turn for the unsettling. October 29th, the day of perihelion, places 3i Atlas directly behind the sun from Earth's perspective. That means every telescope on the ground, and even most in space, will be blind to it for several weeks. During that window, we'll have no direct observations. No images, no light curves, nothing. If any event, natural or artificial, occurs while the object is behind the sun, we won't know until it reappears. That's exactly the kind of cosmic blind spot that has scientists and agencies quietly nervous. Now comes the revelation that's caused the biggest debate since Aumuamua. Avi Loeb's new calculations suggest that 3i Atlas might not be solid at all. Instead, the data implies that it could be hollow, or at least, far less dense than expected. Here, why that matters. Based on its observed brightness and estimated size, 3i Atlas should weigh around 33 billion tons. But during its close pass by Mars on October 3rd, when it came within 29 million kilometers, its gravitational influence was nearly undetectable by the spacecraft monitoring it. For something that large, that's impossible, unless it's mostly empty inside. A solid block of rock or ice should produce measurable gravitational effects on nearby probes. But 3i Atlas didn't. That leaves two options. Either it's made of ultra-low-density material, unlike anything nature has ever created, or its interior is mostly void. Loeb calls this a shell structure, the kind of architecture that suggests engineering, not random formation. But it doesn't stop there. Loeb has proposed what he calls the Dan Lion model. 
He suggests that 3i Atlas could be a mothership, carrying smaller probes, like a dandelion spreading its seeds on the solar wind. Imagine dozens of small, lightweight craft released at the perfect moment, when the object is behind the sun, unseen by Earth, each one drifting toward different regions of the solar system. This isn't science fiction. The concept of self-replicating seed probes has been discussed in astro-engineering for decades. Tiny autonomous devices designed to explore star systems silently over eons. And if 3i Atlas is hollow, perihelion, the moment of maximum heat and gravitational stress, would be the perfect time to release such payloads without detection. There's one more piece that adds to the unease. When 3i Atlas passed near Mars earlier this month, every major spacecraft, NASA's Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, ESA's Mars Express, and even China's Tianwen-1, had the perfect vantage point to capture data. But days before the flyby, the U.S. government shutdown halted NASA communications and data releases. ESA and China both reported data still under analysis. Weeks later, no complete imagery has been released. Officially, it's due to processing delays. Unofficially, it's the most synchronized silence in modern space exploration. For the next stretch, the most advanced observatories on Earth will be effectively blind. 3i Atlas is sliding into solar conjunction, vanishing into the sun's glare, exactly when the most revealing physics play out. That's the paradox. The moment we most need to see is the moment we can't. This isn't a cover-up. It's geometry. When an object passes close to the sun from our line of sight, the sky becomes a wall of light. Ground telescopes risk damage if they point too near. Even space telescopes designed for faint signals struggle against scattered photons, thermal limits, and safety constraints. So for a few crucial weeks, almost everything we learn will come indirectly. There are, however, a handful of eyes that can still help. Solar Sentinels, NASA's SOHO, Parker Solar Probe, and ESA's Solar Orbiter may catch the faintest hints a dust envelope brightening or thinning, a ghostly anti-tail, a sudden surge in outgassing. None of these spacecraft were built to track interstellar comets, but their coronagraphs and heliophysics imagers can sometimes seize a lucky frame when a visitor strays through the field. If 3i Atlas throws off material at perihelion, we might see a subtle signature in those streams of solar images. What should we expect when it reappears from behind the sun? Three possibilities, each one testable. First, the natural script. If 3i Atlas behaves like a volatile poor but still natural comet, it should emerge a touch brighter at first, then fade steadily as it recedes. Its coma will look smoother, with modest CoCo2 driven activity and little to no classic sweeping dust tail. The light curve will decline predictably. The trajectory will match gravity plus small, physically plausible jet accelerations. Boring to the headlines, gold for the science. Second, the stressed fragment scenario. Thermal stress near perihelion could crack the nucleus. If that happens, we'll see a change in the rotation state, erratic brightening, and a cloud of fragments that spread dim, and drift apart along similar orbits. Random sizes, random timing, natural dispersion. Messy, but familiar. Third, the deliberate release pattern. If something more organized is at work, the signatures are different. Multiple point-like companions appearing within a short window, separating at clean, measurable speeds, maintaining stable brightness longer than dust should, and following diverging vectors that don't fit simple breakup physics. Add to that any trajectory adjustment in the parent object that exceeds what outgassing can supply, and the case for unusual dynamics sharpens. Between now and first light on the far side, analysts will watch for quieter, indirect clues. Did solar wind data show a CME that could plausibly nudge the orbit? Do photometric residuals hint at rotation changes we can't see directly? Are there microwave or ultraviolet anomalies in solar monitor frames that align with the comet's predicted position? 
Even a small, repeatable deviation in ephemerides, posted by the Minor Planet Center as new observations resume, will tell a story. Then comes the reacquisition sprint. As the elongation angle widens, networks from Chile, H a W a I letter 2 BBI, the Canary Islands, South Africa, and Australia will pounce. Spectrographs will chase Co, Co2, H2O, CN. Polarimeters will probe grain size and structure. High cadence imagers will hunt for faint companions and micro outbursts. Space assets will join in. Hubble if the geometry allows, JWSD if safety constraints and tracking limits are satisfied, and the solar missions if the comet still skirts their fields. The waiting is more than suspense, it's the experiment. Conjunction hands us a natural before-after test. If 3i Atlas returns on the far side with the same brightness trend, the same smooth coma, the same gentle, physically consistent non-gravitational push, the conservative models win. If it returns changed, sharper point sources, step-like course corrections, unusually coherent debris motion, then the questions get louder fast. Until then, patience is the instrument. The sun is the curtain. And when it lifts, the light curve, the spectrum, and the sky itself will decide which story we tell next. So what do you think? Are we about to witness the first captured interstellar object? Just an extraordinary but natural cometary story? Or will Perihelion reveal something we've never seen before? Drop your thoughts below. Then like, subscribe, and ring the bell so you'll catch our breakdown the moment 3i Atlas reappears from behind the sun. The next images and spectra will decide this story, and maybe rewrite a chapter of how we think about visitors from the stars. Stay curious, the sky is about to answer back.